Resident Evil on Netflix is a truly weird show, and I have thoughts and feelings. Literally all I knew about the show before watching was that Albert Wesker is black. I admit I left for a solid five minutes when I found that out. Does that make me seem racist? Well, when you live in a world where an old white politician determines that his presidential running mate will be a woman of color and he mounts his decision as progress, but it is more likely a thinly veiled power move to ironically exploit that woman of color for votes in power, and it's the same world with an entertainment industry that often operates along similar lines, basically a world where inclusivity, which I love in its unloaded, uncorrupted form, is used as a weapon to turn the ones being included into pawns in a game played by hypocrites. A game of manipulation, exploitation, and ultimately degradation. Yeah, when you live in that world, the initial announcement that Albert Wesker, a villain who couldn't possibly be more stereotypically Caucasian, was being played by a black actor, well, you might have laughed too. Uncomfortably, ironically, philosophically. Now here's the thing. I don't believe on any level that most fictional characters need to be anchored to any particular ethnical background. Take Superman, for example. People who recoil at the idea of Superman being black, people who see Superman's whiteness as fundamental to his identity, are a much bigger part of the problem than those who simply get angry while questioning the actual motives of a studio's choice to alter Superman's ethnicity. Superman does not have to be white. Superman is a fucking alien. Albert Wesker's skin color is not fundamental to his identity. It's possible that his original appearance was crafted to invoke our association with Adolf Hitler's idea of a master race, or at least that's the feeling I got from him sometimes in the games. But there's nothing in the story that definitively anchors him to being white, and except in cases where ethnicity is a fundamental part of a narrative, so-called race swapping is not an inherent foul to me. In fact, I celebrate it in cases where it isn't forced or ill-intended. The foul to me is in the motives behind the choice, and the motives aren't always shady, but I have defaulted to cynicism lately because they so often are. I would say that motives don't matter that much because even if some people have shitty reasons for pushing inclusivity, at least it opens up opportunities to people who didn't have them before and sets the tone for a future where inclusive representation is more normalized and natural. Except it does matter, even down to the basic level of entertainment value, because the kind of hacks that force this stuff in to further an agenda are the same hacks that struggle to write and produce coherent, cohesive, and entertaining movies and shows. So where, oh where, does Resident Evil fit into all of this? As it turns out, I mostly loved Albert Wesker and Netflix's Resident Evil. I never felt pandered to, preached at, or manipulated in any way by this casting choice. In fact, I found his reimagined portrayal largely refreshing. Wesker is a real character here, with some depth and nuance, rather than the fun-to-watch but generic cardboard cutout that he's always been prior. Initially, I did not believe this show to exist in the canon of the game series. It seemed to me like a total reimagining. However, by all appearances, unless I'm missing something anyway, the show actually fits perfectly with the story of the games. This was a delightful surprise for me. Realizing how it all connected was one of my favorite aspects of watching the show. It is seriously hard to explain the story satisfactorily without spoilers galore. If you want me to do a spoiler talk, let me know. And I probably won't, but maybe I will. For now, let's just keep things on the surface. In some ways, this is the most interesting, compelling story told in the Resident Evil franchise. It does get goofy at times, but overall it is solid enough to remain engaging and entertaining. During the first couple episodes, before I was sold on the premise, there were a few instances when I thought the writing was quite bad in terms of narrative contrivances. However, whenever something seemingly stupid happened, the show tended to build on it in a way that made it fulfilling in retrospect. 
Whenever there seemed to be a plot hole, the show quickly and skillfully showed me how it was not actually a plot hole after all. Because of this, Resident Evil didn't take long to earn my trust and respect as a viewer. Honestly, this show has the best special effects I've ever seen in any form of Resident Evil. The zombies, they are been there, done that, basic bitches for sure. But all of the other creatures look incredible. A special level of realism and grit has been achieved here. I don't recall anything being mucked up by bad CGI, and that's an amazing accomplishment for a modern show of this type. The lighting in certain sequences was too dark, sometimes to the point I could hardly see what was going on. However, this didn't happen so often as to detract from my overall enjoyment. Outside of the action scenes, the show looks a bit cheap sometimes, but it's only noticeable once in a while. They definitely put the money where it mattered most. While I enjoy the plot, sometimes it does get away from what most people probably love about Resident Evil. It goes light on action and scares toward the middle, and even the end, in favor of going all in on the lore and character development. I was mostly okay with this, though it struck me as an odd and risky move, and while I do like the lore and characters, I think that the show thinks it is slightly more intriguing and deep than it actually is. One of my biggest struggles with the show is a bit silly to say, but it needs saying. I absolutely could not take adult Jade Wesker seriously through the first few episodes due to a disastrous hair and costume combination. Her running away from zombies in that red jumpsuit and hairstyle that made absolutely no sense in context of the setting kept making me think I was watching Michael Jackson thriller outtakes. It made the wrong first impression big time. But it just goes to show how competent the show manages to be in other areas to overall win me over past that first wonky impression. One high point for me was much of the dialogue. It gets super smart, snappy, and surprising at times. Also, the soundtrack is artsy, brooding, and pretentious, just like me. Again, I was amazed that other than the change in Wesker's ethnicity and demeanor, I detected no direct contradictions to established Resident Evil canon. There are way more connections to the games than I anticipated, right down to well-orchestrated nods to the puzzles and series inside jokes. Honestly, in some ways this show is more of a love letter to the fans than all of the other Resident Evil movies combined. At least you could tell the writers genuinely understand and respect the references and connections they included here, which goes a lot further than the cheap random ways the game references are handled in all the movies. All in all, Resident Evil sure left an impression. I haven't felt so driven to think about and discuss a show like this in a long time. While far from perfect, Resident Evil is at least interesting, thought-provoking, and refreshing in its ability to both subvert and fulfill expectations. As a television show, I give it a 7.5 bad red jumpsuits out of 10. As a piece of art that surprised me and managed to consume my thoughts for the past two days, 9.5 bad red jumpsuits. <laughs>